Um, yeah, obviously, you know, first press conference since uh, our game last Thursday night, and um, you know, our players were disappointed in the outcome. Uh, but what a what a great setting to uh, kick off the season. I just thought, uh, you know, being able to play in Bank of America Stadium in front of a crowd uh, like that, um, you know, a, a lot of uh, enthusiastic pirates down there, along with the Appalachian State faithful, and uh, it was just a great stage, and it's, it's great to have fans back in the stands, and so, uh, you know, just a uh, a very, uh, you know, electric environment to uh, start the season off in. Our kids, uh, you know, went into the game expecting to win. And, uh, you know, so anytime you, uh, you know, go in and you put that much into it, you're disappointed if the outcome doesn't go your way. But, you know, so much for us to build on from that game and, uh, you know, lots of positives and uh, lots of things we, we need to do better. So, um, you know, hats off, like I said, last Thursday night, uh, I just thought, you know, Appalachian State is a very, very good football team, and uh, they look like the experienced veteran crew that they are, and um, I would expect them to go on and have a great year. So we, uh, you know, we're excited on growing from that experience uh, and excited about the matchup this weekend uh, back in Daddy Ficklin with uh, the South Carolina Gamecocks. And it's going to be great to be back at home. It's going to be great to have our fans back in the stands. Um, you know, you think, you know, I, my first year, uh, two years ago, um, you know, got to experience, uh, you know, game day here. And, um, you know, I just completely, you know, missed it last year. You know, it was just, just such a, a weird kind of uh, deal, just playing in empty stadiums. And so it's going to be so exciting to, uh, to have the Pirate Walk back. Pirate Walk will be at 9.30 uh, Saturday morning. Uh, excited to see our fans out for that, tailgating. Uh, you know, doing uh, what, uh, you know, is the norm around here and, you know, really looking forward to, uh, you know, a very uh, loud and boisterous uh, Daddy Ficklin Stadium on Saturday. Coach, when you look at South Carolina, besides the SEC size, which is the obvious thing, what's the thing that kind of stands out to you uh, about the Gamecocks um, that, when you take a look at them? Well, I think size and athleticism. I mean, it's their, their fronts, um, you know, Big and athletic up front on both sides of the football. Uh, you know they have they have you know very good athletes at all the stand up skill positions on on uh, offense and defense. And you know they they did not have Harris last Saturday night. He'll he'll play against us this Saturday, and he was uh, I think the leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference last year. So obviously you know a, a you know a great offensive player there. So um, you know their their personnel is is very good and. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it was a good showing by them last Saturday night. You know, they had a, a game where they were able to work out some kinks and, uh, you know, uh, have, a, have a successful start. And so I know that they'll be excited for this game this Saturday. Just looking at some personnel stuff, uh, Bailey Malavik went out during that game. Obviously, do you have kind of an official update with him? And then how have you shuffled the offensive line at all? Where does that kind of stand at this point in the, the week? Well, unfortunately, Bailey's going to miss the rest of the year, and it's you know, I, I, I hate it. And it's it was a it was a freak deal too. I mean, as one of those, it, it wasn't a contact play. You know, he got just twisted a little bit, um, but he'll have surgery here in the coming weeks. And uh, you know, the good thing with Bailey, he's worked so hard to develop his body. Um, you know, he'll he'll make a he'll make a good recovery, and uh, you know, we want to support him uh, through that. But uh, you know, he's still got some time left in his career here, so. Uh, just have to get him back uh, back healthy for next year. But, um, you know, the fortunate thing is, you know, Noah Henderson, who's worked very, very hard to come back from injury after missing all of last year, uh, I thought he stepped in and played very well uh, in, in, in Bailey's absence. And I think it's, you know, with Noah, he's going to continue to improve just because the only, the only issues with him is just rust, you know, you know, not playing for, you know, a year and a half, two years. So, uh, you know, he, he played very well for us in 2019. So um, I think he can return to that form. And so, uh, you know, you got some other guys who have to step up, you know, uh, but, you know, they got those guys have experience, you know, whether it's Walt Stribling or, or Rob Vanderlyn. Uh, you know, those guys will be, you know, in the, in the rotation now. Coach, kind of following up with uh, the offensive line and, and the blitz package you saw against App State, do you expect blitzes again this week against South Carolina? Well, I would, I would expect to see that uh, you know, pretty regularly. It's, um, I thought App did a great job of mixing up uh, pressure and playing coverage. Uh, so, uh, you know, I thought that was – Yeah, we just... Hello. Hey, can you be quiet, please? Thank you. All right. Sorry about that. 
Uh, I guess everybody didn't get the memo. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought App did a good job mixing up, you know, playing coverage and pressure. Uh, you know, South Carolina, Clayton White, uh, the defense coordinator at South Carolina, did a great job at Western Kentucky. Uh, and he's got a great scheme. So I, I do expect to see a good bit of pressure this week. Coach, uh, as you take a look at the tape from last week, I know there were a couple issues with the kicking game. Is that was it more of the hold? Was it the snap? Was it the blocking? Was it the kicker? What, what adjustments do you plan to make, if any, in the kicking game this week? Well, I think we only had one issue. It was on the, on the first one. And uh, it was a mix-up between the snapper and the holder. Just, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that uh, can happen there in a the first game. And, and we got that corrected immediately. So uh, I thought we did a good job the rest of the night. Coach, when you watch the the film, what was the balance between maybe App just beat you guys, uh, you know, with their scheme versus fixable mistakes on, on you guys' end? Well, I mean, I think it depends on where you're talking, uh, you know, whether it's offense, defense, or wherever. You know, the the thing that defensively that uh, you know is is very fixable is I just thought the speed of their offensive front and the way they executed um, created some situations where we had some guys miss some gaps. You know, we're moving, they're moving. Uh, you know, they move a heck of a lot faster than uh, our scout team guys did during practice. Uh, and we overshot a, a gap every once in a while. And when, you, when that happens, you're going to have a big play. And so that's where some of those, you know, 10, 15 yard runs uh, scored it out on us. So uh, it's something we've, we've very conscientious of. We talked about it on Friday, game speed versus preseason speed. Uh, and so I think it was a great experience for our, for our guys. You know, those D linemen, they got some experience last year. OK, um, but it's just another reminder, you know, for them just the, how fast game speed is. Uh, I think when you look at offensively, it was just execution. And it's and you look at the frustrating thing. It wasn't one guy, you know, but it was maybe six or seven guys one time. Uh, and you put all that together and you look up and, and, and it looks like you had more issues than you had. But uh, I do feel like those issues are fixable. And uh, and I think, you know, most teams um, you know, have some mistakes there in game one, and you, you see them fixed, you know, from week one to week two. That's the reason you see the improvement. Uh, that was one of the things I thought that was most impressive about uh, App State's performance is I didn't think they had many, many mistakes. I mean, I thought they played like a veteran, uh, you know, a veteran roster. Coach, uh, I mean, obviously, talk about your running backs a little bit. Uh, I mean, they're electric when they have the ball in their hands, but they also need to make plays when the ball is not in their hands, right. picking up blitz packages yeah. and stuff like that. What do you want to see as the season progresses from those guys when the ball isn't in their hands trying to pick up blitzes and such? Well, and that's the, the old adage is, you know, be a better player without the ball than you are with the ball. And that's, you know, that's really the key to becoming, you know, a top-end player. And, uh, you know, Raj and Keaton both had one – uh, bust in protection, but you know, you know, having one bust in protection, well, that's two pressures on our quarterback. So, you know, their their number one thing is take care of the football and take care of the quarterback. You know, that's you know kind of their their motto in that room. So, uh, you know, they take a lot of pride in that. Uh, they're very motivated by that. So, um, it's something they have improved on since last year. Uh, and so again, you know, game speed versus practice speed. You know, they they'll be more prepared this week for that. But you know, certainly. You know, they did do some, you know, very good things with the ball in their hands, though. With uh, Rick DeBrew, uh, how did he grade out kind of in the second half? It, kind of a tough deal for him to only play a half. Yeah. And, and obviously, I'm sure he's kind of ready to, to get a full game yeah. in this week. Yeah, I, I didn't think he played uh, at the level he's capable of. Um, I think he's, he's probably a little frustrated with that, too. I mean, it's, it's a hard deal, you know, sitting the whole first half and then, you know, jumping into a game mid, midstream because, you know, everybody else is kind of in the flow of it. But, you know, the good thing is we have him from the, you know, from the beginning this week. How good was it to see Josiah step up and make some, some big plays and really every catchable ball his way, he, right. he made a catch. And, and how big of a part of the offense can he be going forward? Yeah, and then he, and he drew the pass interference on the other on the other ball too. So it's really good. You know, he's he's a guy that you know I've, I've said it a couple of times we were recruiting him very heavily at James Madison when I was there. Um, you know, glad we were able to get him signed when I got here. Uh, but uh, you know, has a lot of ability, uh, has worked very very hard, um, and so I'm just excited to see. You know, he had had a good solid game last week. You know, we'd like to see him follow it up this week. There was a lot of talk about the tight end room 
growing for this season. Um, how would you evaluate how they did and how do we get them more involved? Um, I think some good and some bad. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Ryan had the touchdown catch there late in the game. Um, Shane was battling a minor injury uh, from the preseason camp. And so, you know, probably did not play as much as he will moving forward. Uh, you know, but those two guys, along with, you know, Zach Bird and Aaron Jarman, they all played. Uh, I thought that uh, we did some really good things in the run game. I thought Zach Bird did a good job at the point of attack. Uh, you know, they're all different. And so, uh, you know, they're going to be a big part of our offense. Uh, you know, they were last week. They will be moving forward. From playing on a Thursday, it, you have some extra time, extra practices to some extent for this one. I mean, in general, what has the response been since then as far as just the, the mood and guys being able to kind of bounce back? Have you been pleased with that? Well, I thought, you know, Sunday's really the only time we've had with the guys. Um, you know, our staff, you know, most of our staff stayed in Charlotte and dispersed from there. And uh, we're on the road recruiting Friday for the first time in two years. So, um, you know, we, we were in the office on Saturday, you know, really spending a lot of time with the Appalachian State game. Uh, and then, you know, going over everything for South Carolina. So we'd be prepared to, you know, use that game Saturday night. So Sunday was our big work day as far as, you know, getting the App State game evaluated with our players. Uh, and then getting out on the field. And so I thought they came back, you know, with good attitudes. You know, like I said, they're disappointed. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, fully by yesterday, you know, those are day off or their normal day off. And they were around the facility throughout the day, you know, checking in on the, the game plan and all that stuff and everything. So I would expect us to have a very energetic and enthusiastic practice today to get ready for Saturday. Coach, I would assume this will be one of the biggest crowds in probably four or five years. How much can that mean to this team, and how much can they feed off that going into Saturday? I think it'll mean a lot. You know, it's probably going to be the biggest crowd since I've been here. Um, you know, the funny thing is, we we got in last week and started talking to our our players, and most of them that was the biggest crowd they'd ever played in front of last week. You know, because most of them last year was their first year of college football. So um, I think they're excited about it. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll obviously be electric. Uh, it's, it's one of the reasons that so many of them came here to East Carolina is because of, you know, Pirate Nation and Daddy Ficklin Stadium, the way it is on game day. So uh, I think it's something that, uh, you know, should be a great home field advantage and something for them to feed off of. Coach, ECU is 4-19 and all-time against SEC schools, all four wins being against South Carolina. Uh, just at this point in the season where you guys are right now, is, uh, does, the team, does the team need to, to face a, a quality team in the SEC like this to kind of get things going here? Well, I don't think it has anything to do with where they're from. I mean, we faced a quality team last Thursday night. I mean, that's – I'm telling you, Appalachian State's a top 25 team, you know, nationally. So um, – so we faced a quality opponent. We're facing another quality opponent. So I think it's just they're the next one. Uh, you know, everybody puts a lot of attention on them because of the conference they come from. Uh, but there's good teams across this country everywhere.